This is Comet Picks by the Glick. Hey, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. And good evening to you, Jason Glick. This is when we do record them. Uh, the audience probably picked that up, but we record these usually in the evening. Usually. Yes. Uh, how's think- your inter inner? Uh, what do they call it? The inner period, the inter- in between period between Thanksgiving and Christmas. You know that whole month that we get, almost a month between that. You know where people go crazy and go shopping and blah 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 blah. You know. Oh, I don't have to worry about shopping anymore since I just do all my stuff on on Amazon. Woo-hoo. And hey, ladies and gentlemen, he does not get paid by Amazon. Yeah, I just what? plug I just plug them for free because I am completely yeah. I'm completely in the tank for them after just ordering all my comics through them, and it's been good lord, it's like so much stuff, so much stuff from them over the last last couple of weeks and even more um, this this week as well. But this is actually something. This week, I'm talking about something that I actually got from them a couple couple weeks ago. Yeah, so we got um, we're going um, once we're going to the to the realm of back to the realm of like a manga that you know that uh, that sells in level of um, sweet fuck all because we've I'm talking about um, today about Mitsuru Adachi's Cross Game. And you're saying like you know Jason like I've never heard of this series called Cross Game. Well, I'm not surprised because you know it's a it's a sports manga, and God knows that that even that um. All, any comics about sports just don't seem to sell at all. It's like in a, in America, it's like even good ones. If there's any justice, I'd be seeing um, Takahiko Inoue's Slam Dunk um, on the New York Times bestseller list after every volume comes out. Even though it's well over a decade old, it's still a fantastic, goddamn fantastic manga. But still though, it's like um, Cross Game. To, to give you an idea of how, I wouldn't say I don't want to say that Viz um, had um, didn't have faith in this series. But at the same time, you can certainly tell they're hedging their bets because this is a 17-volume series that was released in eight volumes over here. That's right. First volume contains um, three volumes, and every volume after that contains two. By the way, right out of the right out of the gate. Right out of the gate. Yeah, it's like this is these now these is this is how they were they, the series was eventually packaged in Japan, but that's after it, w- it was a huge success because I mean like because. Because its creator, Mitsuru Radachi, he's a huge name in Japan. I mean, the guy is like at this point, uh, yes. I mean, he's guy's an institution. He sold over 200 million copies of his of his manga. It's like over the years, best known for probably best known in Japan for his um, for his series Touch, and this is the um, first extended um, um, series that we've that we've got from him. We got a uh, anthology of his short program a couple of years back. But um, this is a guy who um, rose to fame um, in in the eighties, um, right around the same time as Rumiko Takahashi of um, Inuyasha, um, Ranma One Half, and Maison Okoku fame did in pages of Shonen Sunday. So, but um, as far as but but then this is like I said, this is the first um, extended series we've got from him, and uh, I, I think once again, like um, this puts that um, Shonen Jump money to good use because, well, let's just say this is a series that. That yeah, it's like you can tell it was having trouble trouble sales because like, cause like while the series was originally released on a quarterly schedule, um, this last volume, volume eight, took um, oh wow, it was about like six to eight months to come out, um, like after it got it got knocked back on Amazon like several months from its initial initial release date back in May I believe, so but still it's like what's coming is like is it any good or am I just talking about it now just so I can I harsh on it? Well, a little from column it's a it's a lot from column A, little from column B, because overall, it's like because overall, I did enjoy this series. It's like even though it's like I'm not not really a sports fan at all, at all. It's like the um the tale of um tale of this of of these kids playing um baseball in high in junior high and high school. It's like really it's like it's it's really is really compelling compelling and engaging material. But it's like it takes but he takes it but um. But Adachi takes a novel um, stance at the beginning, because you see, the first it starts off by introducing us to um, to our protagonist Koki Tamura, the uh, son of a uh, sport, son of a sporting goods store manager, and he's just like your your average like uh, your average like you know elementary school kid, just you know always like he's kind of kind of bit of a wise ass kind like he like he he cons his local neighborhood kids into buying um, baseball gear so that he can get a bonus in his allowance from his dad after he sells it to him. So it's like he's so he's not really a sport, sporting guy, but um, but the girls in the family who lives who lives in the um, batting it's like 
in the um, batting uh, like in, in the batting cage next next door. It's like they are. It's like they certainly it's like they certainly are. There's the uh, there's the See, there's there's the dad who's a sing, who's a single dad after the mo- after mom died. The oldest um, Ichijo, um, second youngest Wakaba, um, third youngest um, Aoba, and um, fourth youngest Mom- Momiji. Now Ko and um, Wakaba are tight as tight can be. It's like they're basically like they're basically a couple back in in elementary school. And that that's kind of like gets gets the ire of some of the of, of Amakaishi, the, uh, the the neighborhood bully, but. Um, Next to Nakanishi, um, one of the kids he conned into buying um, sporting in, in, in baseball gear, Ko gets kind of drafted into their ba- ba- baseball game. It's like, and so we we had this the first volume of the series, basically like the first uh, 170 pages or so of the first volume, is basically like this telling us the story of these these kids these kids of the element of Ko in his elementary school days, how, how, showing how close he is to Wakaba, his um like his antagonistic relationship between the um. Um, the, the younger sister, um, Alba, and just you know how he eventually like re- starts like you know kind of pre- getting, getting kind of appreciation for b- baseball, but then um, something happens. It's a tragedy, and it kind of like hangs over the rest of the series, serving both as mot- motivation and reminder. It's like as you know what, as like you know like what these people have, like you know, what motivates the, these characters in like in their it's like in their everyday lives. It's like I'm not gonna not gonna say what. What it is, but chances are, it's like I may just give it away anyway because I can't, because I'm, because that's how, that's how I that's how I am. But if you're, but if you're familiar with the, with the rules of genre, um, then you may be able to, be able to guess guess what I'm talking about. Anyway, the cool thing about this introductory um, volume is that, well, um, most um, writers would just go ahead and like have this like you know this dark cheek dark secret um, motivate like like. Like um, showing what's motivating the cast, and just kept it a secret until they reviewed revealed it in a past arc. Um, Dachi decides to just you know have this 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 tragic event unfold in real time, so to speak. It's like in this first volume, it's basically just showing you like okay, this is you know this is this is the, this is the thing this is the formative event in these these characters' lives, and this is how it's this is how it affects, it's going to affect them from here from here on out. It's a it's a good clever device because once he shifts into the present day, like start. Turning the um, second third of all uh, of volume one, so if we get to, like we get what's kind of what's motivating the character. We've already gotten to know them, we've gotten to know all the key players, and um, then and so seeing how they ch- how they change, like how Akaishi is basically morphed into a respectable, um, into a respectable um uh, high, like um junior high school student. Um, Nakanishi is kind of like he, he's kind of like um gone gone on the bad side a little bit, and Ko he, well he even though he was Starting to appreciate baseball a little bit. He's kind of fall. He's he's still not sure about it and whether, whether or not he wanted to actually, actually play or not. So it's like it's so like this. But then this volume basically shows you know, how he it's like he how 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 he basically goes and the rest of the volume goes on to show how they um eventually like eventually come together to form to um be part be a part of the team at their high school, say Shugakuen, and how like you know Ko manages his relationship with with Alba, who who's now who's who's a year younger than him. And um, both they have kind of like a very antagonistic um, love love hate relationship. Um, it's like for those of you like those of you familiar with the very Jap- very specific um, Jap- Japanese character types, um, Aoba is um, very much a tsundere. So, but still, it's like but um, really like the best part about this series is the are the sporting parts because because um, Cole winds up because there there are basically two types of um, groups of baseball teams in at Ko's high school. Um, who now the, the Coast High School wants basically really wants to get a team that's going to go to Koshien, which is basically the champion, Japanese championship um, for high school ki- for high schools, and so they've hired this really um, this really um, hard edge and driven um, coach named Daimon, and he's brought in a bunch of scholarship students and um, and it's like other kids he's recruited just to serve as fodder for these these much more talented characters, and like he, he basically has his own varsity team and they're going to. Uh, like, you know, basically be the uh, the ad, basically be the mo- like the, the team that's gonna like, really gonna do it at the expe- at um the, pl- the players' health, their love of the game, all that be damned. It's like it's Koshi and her bust for this guy. Ko, on the other hand, um, N- um Akaishi and Nakanishi winds up in wind up in the uh, junior varsity team where the portables is their is their call as as they're called, and they're kind of like the, basically regarded as kind of like the dung heap. 
And they're, but they look at this and think, you know, it's like, hey, you know, we don't want to take this. We, we've got some guys who got talent. It's like, and we're gonna, like, you know, go and get this and force this guy guy out by, it's like, by way of, what, by just showing him what we can, what we can do. Now, this all comes, this comes to a head in the first. It's like, um, the things that really get rolling in the second um, volume, when um, the, when the, the face off between the um, the Ford Wolves team and the Varsity Squad happens, and. It's like I won't tell you how it exactly turns out, but it's nice. But it's nice, you know, kind of breaking of momentum moment, the kind that I like so much in Slam Dunk. They, uh, it's like the portables really, really show these guys what they're, what they're made of, and the uh, and the result is is quite surprising, especially when even more so once the um, rematch happens and we get the um, that sweet sweet moment of vengeance against um, Diamond and his tactics that that were so dis- that we so that were so that were ho- that were hoping for, because you see, it's like. Even though it's like a lot of this stuff is very familiar, like you know, just like like the character, the character types are the uh, the whole arc of you know like the under the underdogs taking on taking on the the big guys like it's like it, it's it's like it, it's handled extremely well by by Adachi. He he knows how to how to develop the characters. He knows how to properly b- build things up. It's like this. It's like he, it's like he. You can tell, like, re- like reading this stuff, you really get the feeling that we are in the hands of kind of like a uh, a grandmaster, someone who who know who, who knows the like who knows these kinds of stories inside and out, and knows exactly how to get you know the maximum emotional impact out of his out of his readers. And it's also and for the most part, and that and that continues to be true throughout the rest of the rest of the series, um, at least as far as the uh, baseball parts um, go, because. He, it's interesting to contrast his his style with um with Inoue's from Slam Dunk. So uh, um Slam Dunk is is all adrenaline, like you are in the basketball game and like stuff is happening like right, it's like right as they're going go, right as they're going down. It's like with baseball, it's like it's it's a much more deliberate, slow paced style. It's like um Adachi is he's it's like he, he, like, he, like he, you're just kind of like jumping at the bit to see like, what's gonna happen next, but he's just like slowly doling out the. Uh, it's like the the information in it's like in, in a very very decompressed style, but but it's all the more tense because you just want to know, you know what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next, and it's and like I said it's it's a really um, engaging tactic that he makes that he makes work and that that ca- and that that carries series through all of its rough points um, right right up to the end end, end of the series. Now, to, to be honest, though, it's like this is. A, it's. I guess it's. You can only say that like, you know a Japanese series would feel um, short at say 17 volumes, because you know the way that the, though I do though the, the series ends well enough. It ends at a point where you're kind of like, okay, you know it's like I want to see you know this, this thing that was promised to me. It's like at at the very beginning of the series, I and mean, you know it's going to happen. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, so you get the feeling that you know like once these characters got what they wanted, the very next day it's like. Everything went completely to shit. So it's like I don't know that. That's just speculative, but you know what I mean. Basically, it shows them they achieve. Basically, they kind of achieve their dream. You know, everything that happens after that is kind of is kind of academic. That being said, the reason why I say this series like um, excels in the base baseball scenes is because um, while Adachi is a is great at handling drama in that, oh god, he. The um relation, the romantic relationship he he um, fosters between um Ko and Aoba is fingernails on blackboard annoying. God fucking damn it! I like the like the more I read about this read read about these characters, like the more it just like grated on my nerves. Because okay, let me just say that like I I've never really been one for romance in in, in a lot in um in fiction or like or a lot of comics I read in general. Mainly because it's just kind of like the same old shit, you know. It's like just people realizing that you know they're going to be, um, they're meant to be together, but it's not going to happen. But it's not going to happen until the very end of the series, and it's just kind of like you know, hour like pay hours or pages of just like people just like you know just like just like going rah, 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 until they reach it, they um, get through it at the very end. The stories I've liked have romances I've liked, uh, you know, stuff like um, here is Greenwood, but that she managed to pull off the. Uh, like the whole, the guy's gonna try and get the girl at the very end. That, that only that only really ramps up towards the end of the, end of the series. So it's it, got, it has pacing on its side. Um, Paradise Kiss, where um George and Yukari. I mean, good lord, they are. It's kind of an anti-romance story because they're not meant to be together, but they still have far more chemistry than um what Ko and Aoba manage here. 
And um, even something like, you know, hey, I'll go go out and throw a um, Vertigo Swamp Thing, because I'm um, written by in, in the Alan Moore era. Because, you know, when Swamp Thing goes down, goes to hell to rescue his girl, girlfriend, Abby Soul, I mean, that's that's great stuff right there. And also, like, you know, it's, uh, in Planetus, both the um, the manga and the anime. In the manga, it's like they just zip through the, uh, the like, the uh, all the, uh, the um, boring conventional stuff, boring romantic stuff with... Um, Hachimaki and Tana, Tanabe, and just say, hey, okay, you know they're going to be, they're going to be, t- you know they're going to be a couple eventually. Bam, let's make them a couple right now. Then you've got um, the anime where they actually had them de- um, be pair up you know, halfway through the series, and then the um, rest of it was just kind of like the more interesting stuff of the relationship. Basically, how do they stay together? So that that's great stuff. Um, cross game, no, it's like cross game for seventeen volumes. It's it's basically um, like um, Ko and Aoba, just like Ko going, it's like, you know, it's like I, you're, kind of a, you're kind of an annoying girl, but, you know, it's like you're, I like your sister, so I guess I kind of like, like you as well. And Aoba going back, well, you know, it's like you, my sister liked you, I really liked you, so I kind of annoyed that you kind of took, took away from me back when we were kids. But, you know, it's like you're kind of an okay guy, so I guess I'll kind of like you together. And it's just like them bickering and bickering and just like delivering grudging praise every every couple of volumes after that. And it's, it's so goddamn annoying that, um, that's like, I, um, that, you know, and you figure that by the end of the series, at least they're going to like, you know, finally admit, okay, you know what? I really like you. Let's go fuck. Or, well, that's what it would be if, you know, but Sonen Sunday is, so Sonen Sunday is actually a pretty, you know, pretty family friendly, uh, uh, ma- magazine. But so, no, so they don't do, they don't do that. Instead, they just like, it's, Instead, instead of just saying the whole, the whole like you know romantic thing, it's kind of like you know it's they're just they just become less grudging towards each other, and yeah, I know the series you know isn't specifically meant to be about um, you know the romance between them, but it's but it takes up such a large part of the part of the series that it just gets um it, and it doesn't it just doesn't go anywhere. It's just like it's spinning its wheels for a lot of the. For a lot of its run, I mean, you get the feeling that you know, while Adachi had this great idea at the beginning to show you, like you know, this this tragic event that defines these characters, and like at the beginning, instead of just you know, unspooling it later on throughout, like th- throughout the series, it's like he just felt like, oh well, I'm just gonna like you know, you know, Ko and Alba, then you know, this relationship is how it, how things are always done, and you know, I don't see any reason to you know go and bust you know go and bust that up. I just get the feeling that, you know, I wish he had shown a bit more forward thinking or like, you know, out of, out of the box innovation towards handling their relationship and that he did for the overall, overall structure of the story. So basically it's like, it's like, it's got, it's like, it's got, the series has, has great characters, great action when it's focused on the base, but focused on baseball. Otherwise it's, it, it, everything else, like when they're not doing that kind of ranges from, from merely tolerable to, to oh god, oh god, it's like um, I can't turn the pages fast enough. So, but you know, it's like even, but even like some of the, uh, but I guess it's testament to his talent that even some of the more annoying bits, um, when they're when they're placed in the uh, in the context of the sports, of the sporting sport in the sports arena, such as like you know, such as like um, se- like send the hey, I'm the I'm I'm so awesome, I can't hear you guys speak, but um, I'm really kind of a dope. Um, he, he kind of like. It's like he he kind of becomes kind of a uh, kind of endearing over the course of the series, as does Azuma, the uh, the clean the uh, cleanup hitter um, for for Diamond's team, who eventually comes over, who eventually realizes, that, hey, you know, like this like this guy's um this has a dope. It's like I'd rather go and um, um be with um, Ko and um and his his team instead. It's like, like I said, those guys when in when they're handled in the context of the of the uh, of of, ba- of the base of baseball itself, it's all good. Otherwise, well, you know. But still, like I said, on balance, it's like the series is the series is thoroughly enjoyable. And like when you're and when you're in the midst of a of a, of a big of a big baseball game, it's like you're just gonna like want to like keep going. What's gonna happen next? That that is enough to ca- that that was enough to carry me through the series. And I guess I would certainly rec- recommend it to anyone else anyone else who's looking for 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 good for good sports manga emphasis on the sports john got any thoughts on this capital s sports capital <laughs> s sports yes 
Um, <clears throat> no, not really. Um, just uh, interesting description, um, and uh, maybe I'll pick up the first volume for sure. The you know the American volumes here are definitely value priced. Um, when you have three volumes in one, you know. Yeah, three volumes in one for the. For the three volumes in one for the first volume, that's twenty bucks. Yeah. The subsequent volumes are two in one, and they come priced at fifteen bucks each. Yeah, that's not bad at all for um, manga, fresh new printed manga. Well, I mean, you know, off of the yeah. shelf, not used or anything. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like Viz, like I said, Viz was pretty forward thinking, realizing that you know, this needed to be packaged in a in as few volumes as possible if we were going to get be able to uh, get all of these out to, to our audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this strikes me as very much a labor of love for whoever, for whoever at the company was involved in this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So that you know, um, sports, sports manga with uh, you know the touch of of romance, but the type of romance you would read in Shonen Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like I I grew out of this stuff like age, ages ago, and just like I said, it's it's like fingernails. I'll say it again. It's fingernails on blackboard. I, I, I guess it's because, you know, there's not many variations on that theme. And the ones that care the most are the ones that are, are relating, you know, uh, romantic concepts to their own lives. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just trying to rationalize an excuse as to why people would like that, you know, romance element. Um, I don't know. I guess, like I said, it's, it seems like he, like he, like this is like this is like the formula, and it's like he just said, you know, okay, the, this is I, I'm not fix what ain't broken, so I'm just gonna go in through, go in through, with, go go through with this as as it is, and you know, I guess, like I said, people people you know people like like the like formula, so I mean, like there's, but I mean, like this particular formula just grates on me like nothing else. <laughs> All right, and uh, you know what uh, you're going to be talking about next time. Yes, I'm going to going to go back to the um, inexhaustible well that is on um, the works of Garth Ennis to talk about talk about the um, finale to his latest his latest series, The Boys. There you go. All right, and until next time, we'll catch you later on uh, comics pick pop, <laughs> comic picks by the Glick. Later. See ya. Bye.